Good morning, everybody. It is one awesome day out here. Let me tell you, the, the sun is shining right now, and uh, it might rain a little bit later, but not until later tonight or tomorrow. But, hey, we have um, the snow melting, and it's a good day to, to shout out our praises to God, along with Psalm 99. Psalm 99 is the psalm that's assigned to this coming Sunday, which is the Sunday of the Transfiguration. You remember, that's that event where Jesus took Peter, James, and John up the mountain to pray. And while they were up there, Jesus was revealed in all of his glory. And also, he was standing there with two other dudes, Moses and Elijah. Hey, how'd that happen? Well, you have to wait. We'll talk about that later this week. But right now, remember that the psalm is always linked up to the gospel lesson for the day, the best that they can do it. And this is one of those psalms in the Older Testament that's a psalm of enthronement. At the very end of Book 4 of the Psaltery, uh, you have... A grouping of psalms, uh, it's 93 and then 95 through 99, they're called enthronement psalms. And there's a few other ones scattered throughout um, the psaltery as well. But right there, there's a whole bunch of them. And an enthronement psalm lifts up God as king. God is king of over all the earth, over all the people. And especially in the psalm that we have for today, it's talking about his kingship over us as people we as human beings some of the other enthronement psalms they have all of creation clapping their hands and the mountains shouting and skipping and all that kind of stuff right um so but this is different it's basically focusing on people and the, the thing is it's a psalm that was used as part of a worship service we're not exactly sure what that liturgy was all about. It could have been just, you know, when we have an opening hymn in church, sometimes it's just a, a hymn of praise. And it, that's very well what this could have been. Only uh, either the people would uh, sing part of it and someone else would be singing part of it. There's a refrain that pops up a couple different times. Uh, and that refrain is, holy is he. Holy is he. It, it, it pops up twice, and then at the very end of the psalm, it changes just a little bit, and it says, the Lord our God is holy. So we're thinking that was what the people shouted out while Cantor uh, did the rest. But anyhow, what's in this psalm that, that's, that draws our attention to it, and why do we have it for Transfiguration Sunday? Well, it's probably because there's a little bit of a mention at the end that we have a God... And we're called to worship at his holy mountain. And that's where Jesus was, up on the mountain for the uh, Mount of Transfiguration. Um, but also, it talks about speaking to the people from the pillar of cloud. Um, that Transfiguration event, when we get to it, wow. Lots of, lots of clouds, lots of uh, bright light and all that kind of stuff going on. But it's a psalm that basically says... This is the way God is. This is the way he rules. And really, it's the way our, our rulers should rule. I want to draw our attention to verse 4. Mighty king, lover of justice, you have established equity. You have executed justice and righteousness in Jacob. In Jacob, meaning in Israel. In other words, this is the way our kings are supposed to rule. But... You know, that doesn't always happen, but that's the way God rules. And then a little bit later, they mention Moses and Aaron were among his priests, and Samuel was also among those who called on his name. Now, Moses and Aaron, yeah, that's the people that led the Israelites out of slavery. What, what is, why does Samuel pop up in there? Well, it's because all three of these were people who kind of interceded for the Israelites whenever they goofed up and really messed up. And because of their intercession, God would come and for, forgive the people. They cried to the Lord, and he answered them. Um, now, it's, it's a, a, a great psalm. I like here at the very end, O Lord our God, you answered them. You were a forgiving God to them, but an avenger of the wrongdoing. So in other words, yeah, we can experience forgiveness, but you know what? Sometimes there's still a price that's paid. And does God, is he the avenger? Is he the one that, that brings upon us that punishment? Well, it's, it's kind of ambiguous in the Old Testament. There are places to say, yes, he does. But more likely, in other places, it's just the assumption that, hey, you asked for it. 
and it's coming your way. It's a consequence of your actions. But still, we have a loving God who brings about justice and mercy and, and loving kindness and all that sort of thing that's written all over the Psalms, all over the Old Testament, all over the New Testament as well. Well, Enjoy reading Psalm 99. It's not that long. It's only, let's see, nine verses long. It's a, a, a great one to wake up to and start out refreshed, praising God for being king over all. God's blessings be with you on this wonderful, glorious day. Ugh. Bright, bright and sunny. Blessings be with you.